Hey guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In this video, we're going to look at how to implement the request reply pattern using RabbitMQ. And this will be the final major pattern that we will look at implementing using RabbitMQ in this tutorial series. As usual, we will have implementations in both Python and C Sharp in the upcoming videos. So after you watch this video, please feel free to choose the appropriate implementation for your knowledge the request reply pattern allows us to send a request into RabbitMQ, specifying a queue that we would like a reply to be sent to. When the consumer consumes this message, it's able to send the reply onto the queue we've specified. So we will explain using a quick diagram to get the idea of what we're trying to achieve. As usual, we will have a producer and a consumer, but in this case, because both services are both consuming and publishing messages, we won't call them a producer and a consumer. Instead, we will call them a client and a server. So the client is what wants to send a request to the server and receive a reply. And the server is what needs to process that request and send the reply. The first thing the client will do is it will declare a queue that it wants to receive replies for requests on. The client will process all the messages sent to this queue from the server as a response to a previously sent request. When the client is sending a request, it will, as usual, publish the request onto an exchange. The type of exchange used can vary depending on our scenario, as long as a message is then put onto a queue that the server can read off. We'll call this queue the request queue, while we call our other queue the reply queue. The server then reads requests off the request queue and processes them. Once it's finished processing the request, it needs to send a reply back to the client. It does this by publishing onto the reply queue, usually using the default exchange. So this completes our full circle where a client publishes a message onto an exchange that is then read off a request queue by a server. The server will spend a bit of time to process the request and then publish its response or reply onto the default exchange and then the already specified reply queue specified by the client. But how does the server know which reply queue to send its reply onto? This reply queue needs to be specified by the client and is specified when publishing the message onto RabbitMQ. It uses the reply to property to tell the server which queue it wants a reply sent to. So in this case, we're setting our reply to to the reply queue that we want the message to be replied to on. This property is passed all the way to the server and when the server is finished processing the request, it knows exactly which queue to MQ the message onto. However, there is one other problem with this setup. If the client sends multiple requests onto the request queue and they are processed by a server or perhaps even more than one server, it then receives multiple replies onto the reply queue. How does the client know which reply is for which request? To get over this, we can tag some metadata on our request, which uniquely identifies the request. The server can then tag this metadata also on the reply so the client is able to coordinate which reply came from which request. The correlation ID or message ID properties are often used to convey this information. Often we have a unique message ID per message. So the client will send a message to the exchange with a unique message ID. In this case, A, B, C, D, E, F. This will then be routed to the server. The server might decide to populate the correlation ID on its reply with the same message ID that received in the request. This will allow the client to uniquely identify which reply is for which request. An alternative approach might be for the server just to use the same correlation ID on its reply that was the correlation ID sent on the request from the client. Either approach works well, so choose the appropriate approach for your implementation requirements. So this quick video was just to give a very brief overview of the request reply pattern in RabbitMQ and how it is achieved. In the next two videos, as we said, we'll look at an actual code implementation of this pattern. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. 